You know, even the Foreign Service, I'm very disappointed. Oh, terribly. Uh, uh, for the last 10, 15 years, I've been looking at uh, the, the Indian Consul General in New York. They're completely out of touch. There was one fellow who somebody said, uh, you should go meet this fellow and he'll, he'll tell you about what's going on in the academic world and media, about our culture and all. So he came to see me and then he invited me to his, his place and he would start calling me uh, whenever he was invited. So for once he was invited to a South Asian conference in Harvard and he was driving there on his limo and on his way he called me and he says, Ki ye conference ho rahi, aise hoga, what should I say? So I said, first you tell me who are the other speakers. And he told me the names of these speakers. He didn't know them. And I said, this guy is a Khalistani, this one fellow. This other fellow is very radical uh, uh, Pakistan guy. And this is an ambush. And they're going to make a really uh, thing out of you. So he, did, he was very scared. So I read out. I told him, here are some of the facts. You should, you should be prepared that uh, if you've been invited and this is the kind of group it is, you should be prepared. So he actually got quite nervous and didn't uh, go there. But oh. then he got very, uh, he, he started talking to me about it. And I said, the Ministry of External Affairs, the State Department in the US would never have a prominent person go off without homework. Without homework, and, and they would really know who's who and they would know a lot about him. But I was absolutely. surprised that this government of India, they, they don't have, a, even now, I don't think they have a think tank. Just a I have met, uh, they don't. I met the new <laughs> External Affairs Minister and, you know, extremely well-meaning, extremely decent, extremely connected, very hardworking, all of that. But I feel that the support team just don't have the depth of understanding the others in civilizational terms. Absolutely. To understand strategy and to keep up with the, with the amount of research that is going on around the world on all the desks, I think we, are, we, have to, we need a paradigm shift somewhere. I, uh, I just recently met the new Foreign uh, Services Officers Bunch. They are tra being trained in the Foreign Services Institute. I did that. I, did that. Yeah? Well, I attended that one. I gave a seminar there. Exactly. So they, they are so pleased with having become foreign services officers because from the time children are young, we keep telling them that they have to do well in exams. So these are kids who've done the best. Some of them are doctors, some of them are from the IITs and now they've become IFS officers. It's almost as though it's done for them. They don't, they don't realize that this is the beginning of the journey and this is where it begins. I had a very interesting experience. The director of FSI, uh, you know, Foreign Services Institute, Institute yeah. invited me uh, last year to give a talk to the whole new batch of about 30, 30 of them. And I, I, my talk was on Indian civilization and its place in the world and its place in diplomacy and how the Chinese project it, how the Japanese project theirs. The Korea Foundation has come up with books on Korea, which every library is given. The China Foundation, the, you know, all of these foundations of four nations are doing this work. Nobody's doing it for India. And what are some of the issues that diplomats will face? And I, and I must say the group was 50-50 polarized. There were those who were so happy. And they came to me and they said, we want to learn more. Tell us, these are things we are not taught. I thought they would be taught. The others were very upset. This bothered me. I would say at least half the people said, what India? I come from Northeast. I don't understand what India. Is it the Dalits India? Is it this guy's India? Which India? So they had this sense of there is no such thing as, a, my topic was the Indian grand narrative and how you project the Indian grand narrative overseas. And they were completely against this idea that of such a thing as an Indian grand narrative. There is a narrative for this group and a narrative for that group. And it shocked me that these are the people who will be representing India. And who it is, who is this India that they are representing is not that clear to them. Now they are very well indoctrinated on what's the Kashmir policy and this and that, nuclear policy. But on civilization and culture, the sense of unity, continuity, I didn't see that they were convinced enough and knowledgeable enough. So I can, I have that issue with them. 